Did you know uh, prior to shooting the pilot that Jason did not die on July 4th? No. I don't think anybody knew that, including yeah. Roberto. Okay. No, no. We, <laughs> we definitely were not aware. Um, I didn't even know that I was really dead. I remember reading the pilot, and uh, the whole time I was like, there's no body. There's no body. <laughs> there, there's no way I'm actually dead. It's not, it's not true. And then I get to the end, and you see the body wash up on shore, mm -hmm. and I was like, well... Never mind, I'm dead as a doornail. Yet you've been in so many places. I know. And it can't get rid of me. I know we see Jason sort of as a zombie at the start of episode five in a dream sequence. Would you like to see Jason come back in an afterlife with Archie episode? I would love that. You know, I've, I've had the opportunity to read uh, some of the afterlife with Archie trades um, written by Roberto, and, like, I love that series. I think it's so good. And if there was, like, a whole afterlife-themed episode... That would be so much fun for me. Like, I feel like I feel like for Riverdale, you would have to be patient zero because like it's the kind of, it's the conceit of the show, right? <laughs> right yeah, exactly. yeah, totally. Gosh, was zombie outbreak hit our version of Riverdale? I like to see Cheryl as a zombie. Really, she'd still look fabulous. <laughs> yeah, she'd still have her red uh, fingernails and red lips. Of course. Is it hard to get into the mindset when you're acting opposite the actors that play your parents? And, I mean, Cheryl always looks like she has a hesitation around them. No, it's no. not. Um, okay. Natalie and Barclay are both such wonderful actors on and off screen. They're phenomenal people. Um, and that was, I mean, I kind of built the core of who Cheryl is off of that dynamic with her parents. So it's always kind of been the driving force of every scene, even when she's not with them. So it's been very easy for me to kind of carve that path and figure that out with my family. Considering the way that Cheryl was raised and that this strained relationship she has with her parents, is she concerned about the baby and the baby interacting with these crazy adults? Absolutely. I mean, you just finished Seven, right? Yes. So you see we're that halfway through it. Oh, you're just, yeah, okay, halfway. so you haven't seen this part yet, so I'm not going to tell you too much, but <laughs> essentially um, there is a moment where you see her interact with her mother about it and you see the, the terror of like the idea of her parents getting a hold of these babies. It absolutely is a huge concern to her. In the beginning of Seven, she kind of almost wants them to be in their parents' care. She thinks it will be better for them, and then she hears what they actually want for them, and it doesn't really work out so well. <laughs> so you on Team Blossoms or Team Coopers? <laughs> God, I'm on Team Coopers. The Blossoms are insane. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. We're not that Our, bad. Um, my mother beats me, so <laughs> what? <laughs> were they nicer to Jason than they were to Cheryl? Yes, Jason was the golden boy, oh. yeah. Definitely a, a favorite of the, of the two. Which I think is why we have the dynamic that we do where there's so much love because he sees how he's treated and then how I was treated and he wants to protect and care for yeah, me because they say, don't. There's definitely a protective element yeah. I think, between their relationship. Especially because uh, Jason is the older brother. Um, By how many minutes? Yeah, like, Three? Yeah, very few. But, you know, as a twin, I take that very seriously. Well, and so, uh, And so I definitely feel like I need to look out for her. You know, I definitely have that responsibility. For uh, this week in particular, we, you learn about uh, Jason's involvement with the football and the, the playbook and things, mm -hmm. and it really, it changes, it kind of rattles your, your cage quite a lot. Cheryl's in denial a lot mm -hmm. about that, and then once it really hits her, it kind of takes the curtain down of the facade of who she thought her brother was, which is a, which is really rattling for her, absolutely. I mean, she has this whole image of who he was because the way he treated her was so fragile and so protective and so loving. And then finding out that he was treating, you know, who he was treating badly like that, I think it really rocks her world because she teams up against the people who do that, right? What'd you say? Excuse me? <laughs> what about Cheryl? <laughs> Crickets. Veronica does hang out with me. Veronica does. Have you seen the episodes? We're done. We're done. <laughs> this is totally going on YouTube. <laughs> this is our day to day, by the way. A quick question for you, actually. When you do come in here, it's like you'll be at, you'll be gone for three episodes, and then you'll play you'll play your character for a scene. Right. So, so much stuff happens and so much is revealed about you in between every time you, like, step into this character for a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, is that jarring for you as a performer? It can be. It's really interesting because I, I almost feel uh, like an audience member in a way. You know, like, week by week, episode by episode, I get to learn more and more about 
who my character is, even if I'm not featured in the episode. Um, the mystery behind Jason um, as a character unravels for me at the same pace as it does for the audience, you know, because I find out with every new script a new layer about who he is, like this week for the, the playbook mm. thing. I was reading it and I was like, no way, this is slander. I can't <laughs> believe this. Uh, but yeah, like I get to learn about the layers and the complexities of who this guy is um, every new time I get to step on set and uh, perform it. And I, that's, really, that's really cool for me. I wouldn't say it's, it's jarring, it's definitely an interesting experience, but uh, it's, it's juicy, you know, it's good. Mm -hmm. Well, considering your character was killed off in the first episode, did you expect to be brought back so many times in the first you know, year? I've been asked that before, and I really, <laughs> really didn't. I had no idea. Uh, I remember after we shot the pilot, I, I, I was talking to my friends, and I was like, okay, like, first of all, we just got to get picked up, right? Second of all, then they have to decide to bring me back, and I wasn't confident that they were going to, you know? Uh, but then every time, you know, when my agent would tell me, hey, we're gonna, they're gonna bring you back for another episode, I just kind of took it as a icing on the cake because getting to be a part of this project at all was, uh, has been an amazing experience for me. And <laughs> Is she the best part? Oh gosh, uh, oh, hope yeah. I didn't waste the last question on that. <laughs> that was, what excites you the most about the rest of the season then? Just the last think. moment you see Cheryl in the season will blow <laughs> your mind. That's all I have to say. And for you? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Maybe it's a bit selfish, but I'm really excited to see how the audience responds to the mystery, uh, or all of the mysteries in Riverdale as they unfold uh, episode by episode. You know, it's gonna be a lot of fun to see people, because I've already seen so many theories come out. Um, and just to see everything come to life is gonna be great.